they put an injunction on us and we can't honk our horns for 10 days. Well, as soon as they did that, then the horns honked for about an hour straight. Hello and welcome to Unheard. I'm Freddie Sayers. The Canadian trucker movement in protest at the COVID mandates started as a Canadian thing and seems to have spread worldwide. There are replica movements going on in places as far afield as Austria and Australia. Well, the media is covering it kind of strangely. At times it seems very negative and we're told there are white supremacist elements within the protests and other times it doesn't seem to be covered much at all. We couldn't get there ourselves, but happily we have Leila Mashui there in Ottawa in the snow, who is going to give us a bit of a tour and report on what she sees. Hey, Leila, where are you exactly? So I'm standing in front of the Canadian Parliament. This is like the main gate. It's covered with signs, so you can't see the actual building. But I can shoot over. Here it is. That's the Parliament. There are fewer protesters right there. They're mostly gathered on the other side of the camera. Someone's speaking on stage. Uh, but if you look backwards, yeah, there we go. So what have you seen over the past week or two? I mean, has the, we've got reports of some like negative or angry behavior, or some people are saying it's been like a big celebration. What's been your experience of the atmosphere out there? Well, of course, everyone's going to have a different experience. But I can say I've spent many hours at all times of the day in the protests. I've come at night, I've come in the morning, I've come in the afternoon. It's always been nothing but a festive and friendly atmosphere. I have nothing but positive interactions. Um, you know, the truckers, the protesters are all very keen to speak to you and talk to you about where they're from, why they're here, etc. What have been the key messages that you've heard talking to all of those truckers? What, is this, what are the big ideas that they want to get across? Well, I think the most unanimous message is that they want to see an end to the mandates. They think that they're unfair. They think that they're overbearing. Um, some of them have some mistrust with regards to the vaccines. Um, some of them feel like they've been maltreated by government, whether at the provincial level or the federal level. But it is very much mostly about uh, ending the restrictions. Would you say it's an anti-vax protest? I mean, are, 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 are there vaccinated truckers attending or is pretty much everyone not taking the vaccine? I would say, I mean, from my experience, many truckers are not vaccinated that are here. And so there's a bit of a self-selection in that those that were not vaccinated may have been, you know, forced to take a vacation, let's say, and decided to come here during that time. Um, but there are many people that are vaccinated, especially amongst the protesters during the weekends. So when people are off work, they'll come and I'll speak to people and the vast majority of whom are vaccinated and they're f happy with the vaccine, but they're tired. And a lot of them took the vaccine, in fact, because they wanted to see an end to the restrictions. How do normal Ottawans react to this? Because I imagine it's kind of an imposition for them uh, in their city. Are they angry? Are they understanding? What's been the reaction? Well, listen, um, those who have been angry have been given a lot of space in the Canadian press. I live in Ottawa. I live four kilometers away from Parliament. Where I live, and, in, and I would say any neighbourhood that's, you know, outside of a three kilometre perimeter, you wouldn't tell that anything's different. It's quiet and normal as Ottawa is. It's a very relatively small city. Nothing much goes on, especially not during the pandemic. But yes, like, you know, um, those who are unhappy with the protesters for various reasons, the main um, grievance that they had against them was, of course, the honking have made their voices heard and the media has chosen to highlight these. Have, has the honking stopped? Yes, the honking has stopped. And in fact, the other day, there was an 81 year old man who had worked for his whole life as a janitor. He was a grandfather of 11 children, just a citizen of Ottawa. He was just driving about and he honked his horn. He wasn't a part of the protest or the convoy. And he was arrested by the police because he did that. So it is being, the injunction against the honking is being enforced and broadly respected. How cold is it, Leila? It's a lot warmer now than when the protest started. There was an extreme weather warning when the, during the first two days of the protest, um, so during the weekend. Um, now, today, it's like negative one, so it's quite warm, actually, for a Canadian winter. How did they stay warm in their truck? Well, they have to keep them running at all times. Yes, that's right. They keep them stalling, and that provides warmth. Should we maybe stop and talk to some of these, these people? How about, how about those people? Gonna rush over. Hi, can I talk to you and ask you about your placards? 
What are you protesting? Uh, the the lack of debate. debate uh, the lack of debate? Yeah, there's no... Uh, yeah, the lack of debate. I'm the lack of debate. Fluent in French, though. Oh, <laughs> uh, we speak French, but yeah, yeah, we want, like, a uh, possibility for people to die yeah, well to yeah, die debate. We're protesting the mandate. Mm -hmm. The back mandate in particular. Did you initially support the truckers or from the start? Yeah. Oh, from the start. That's great. That's great. All the way through? We need to. There's no, there's no debate. There's no public debate. It's, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Mm. The censorship, the, um, yeah, the professional that can speak. Uh, yeah. Let me try to find someone else. What are you precisely here to support? Like, what what about the convoy do you support? Uh, I think the overall message here is uh, no more mandates. No more mandates, no yeah. No more mandates. You know, I don't care if someone's vaccinated, go for it. Yeah. Uh, I think we have the freedom of thought in our country, freedom of choice, freedom of religion. Yeah. All those things. And they've are, all been taken away. Yeah. And they need to be restored because it's not right to take people's freedoms away where people fought for this. Yeah. You know, down. Yeah. So we can have freedom. And you know, I find the people who seem to understand this the most are the ones who come from a communist country years ago with women that came for a trial there from the Polish community. Mm -hmm. and they brought a bunch of food to the truckers and they said they, they left that. Yeah. To come here. Mm -hmm. And now it's here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We know, that, we know that we still live in a beautiful country and with the freedom to, uh, you know, well, I guess the problem is, unless you're vaccinated, that freedoms are being taken away. So how far, how far is that going to be taken? I guess maybe our leaders need to be a little bit more accountable to people that maybe they look at as lower, uh, lower on the totem pole. It's that's one thing about this protest, which I guess is a bit irregular, is that everyone here is, I would say, over 40. Most people have children. Many people have grandchildren. Um, so, you know, these people don't really, they're not here for fun, right? Like, We would love to go and talk to one of the truckers. Um, I, I think you've got someone there who we might be able to talk to. Can we, can we see his truck? So, here's the truck. This is Tim's truck, is it? Yes, it is. Wonderful. And is, he's in there, hopefully? He is. Let's go and say hi. All right, let's go. Hi, Tim. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Tim. Hi, Tim. Yeah, you're going pretty good. Thanks, Layla. Let's see if we can now set it up so we can actually have a chat with Tim directly. So, Tim, tell us, are you are you stuck in your truck? Uh, what's the situation? What 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 are you doing there, and what can you see? Well, I can see everything. I'm not stuck in here. I go out and play street hockey, and I walk around, and it's. I hang out in my truck lots because there's always lots of people and kids coming that want to visit. So I don't want them coming to an empty truck, but it's, it's nice out now. I, I walk around and hang out, but I do stick kind of close to it. How long have you been there? Saturday will be two weeks that I've been here. Where did you come from and how long was that trip and, and how long are you planning on staying? Well, I came from Rosemary, Alberta. I'm not 3,600 kilometers from here. And we left on Monday. And we arrived basically in Ottawa Friday night. But that's normally, I, I haul cattle for a living, and that's normally uh, a three-day drive at the speed limit. But it was pretty slow going when there's 40 or 50,000 trucks. So a lot of it was 70, 80 kilometers an hour all the way here. So what was it that made you want to join this protest? Tell us the story. I was thinking about joining it when they first started talking about it. And then I was sitting at home watching the news and the uh, Alberta premier and the Alberta health minister looked us all in the face in Alberta and admitted to us that they had fudged the numbers of over 60% of the positive COVID cases that were hospital cases. They said it was like, well, Tim came in with a broken finger and before we would fix his finger, we made him do a COVID test. And he miraculously turned up positive, even though he had no symptoms. And we wrote him down as a positive COVID hospital case. And it was like, but there's nothing to see here. And I, I looked at my, at my wife and I said, did they just say that, right? And I, did I just hear that? And she said, yeah, that's what they just admitted to lying about the numbers. 
of over 60%. You've been there, obviously, throughout this pandemic. Have Were you sort of suspecting things from the beginning? Did, were you unhappy from the beginning? Or has this grown gradually? When did you start to feel like the, the response to the pandemic was, was not sitting right with you? Uh, when I couldn't uh, go to my grandkids' hockey games and some, some arenas at home are, are too bad, some of them you just can't go. They won't let you. Uh, can't go to uh, restaurants anymore. You know, there's, if they're re- being really hard about it, if you're not vaxxed, you're not going to Boston Pizza or Montana's or they just, they won't let you come in. And it's like, well, you know, that's not right. And then there's been some vaccine injuries and stuff that they're not admitting to. And, and we have like a couple in my family and, uh, they, it's like, oh, it's from something else. You know, it's, it's, it, it's not from that. And it's like, oh, how do you know? It hasn't even been tested and proven. It's, so you haven't, you haven't taken the vaccine yourself? No, no, no. My wife was basically forced to take it so that she could go to the, the old folks home to deal with her mom who's 93, and if she wouldn't have got it, they won't let her in there. Well, her mom's 93 years old. Somebody needs to go in there and help her out sometimes, right? How much of it was about the vaccine for you versus the general sense of overbearing restrictions? Probably more so overbearing restrictions because from the start, I said, I'm not taking it. I'm going to wait five, 10 years to see what the effects are, and then I'll take it if it's all good. But it was all, it's all the other government overreach, right? Like, I'm sick of the paying taxes and I'm sick of paying for them guys to waste money. And when we're going in debt, like, I remember when I was a little kid and the U.S. was a trillion dollars in debt. And it was like, you couldn't imagine that. And now, here we are 40 years later and we're the guys that are, well, I, we're over a trillion in debt now. And I mean, the U.S. is what, 20, 30 trillion in debt? Like they just keep spending money and giving money away and and they give our news media here six hundred million a year to lie to us. You know? Like they don't show the news. They they go off on some side street and they show a couple trucks and a couple hundred people and that that's what they're sending around Canada is what's going on here and it's not even close. Tell us what is actually going on there. What what have you seen on the news and what are you seeing in reality and, and what's the difference between them? Well, I, I haven't been watching the news because it's not, I just don't anymore. But the people at home are telling me, well, they're saying there's, there's 200 trucks and 2,000 or, well, 18,000 people and, and they're robbing the food bank and they're doing all this and they're, the place is a mess. And it's like, you know, that's not the case. There's where I'm sitting and on Wellington Street, I think there's 350 trucks. And last weekend, well, the weekend we got here, the RCMP flew over and took a picture and they estimated there's 2.4 million people. And I was up there and it was shoulder to shoulder, like you couldn't move. And it was pleasant. People were seeing old Canada and, and there's kids and families. And, but if you watch it on the mainstream media, it's like we're burning the place down and we're robbing the homeless and it's, so far from the truth, it's it's not even close. It's not even close. What is everyone doing there? Get, like, describe the scene. So you, everyone's in their truck. You're 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 stationed and you're parked up. You're not you're not moving around. No, is, we're parked. And 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 are, is everyone getting together and and protesting, oh, yeah. or is everyone just sitting in their trucks? What's the atmosphere? No, no. I mean, it's it's not. You can't even call it a protest. It's more like a Canada Day celebration, right? There's no chat and then they i mean there's there's chance like yeah we believe that we will win and people sing in old canada but it's it, it doesn't look like a protest right like no one's wrecking anything people are out visiting people stop by all the time it's it's kind of like a big party but it's not you know what i mean so has the city ground to a halt then is is any normal business taking place or has the city been pretty much shut down i couldn't answer that because I don't really know. I know, like, Wellington Street here, there's nobody driving down it. Like, it's blocked off. There's an emergency lane for people to get by, but there's no rural traffic going by, and they have shut down, like, one bank shut down here last week because it was just 
too noisy, you know, like they were honking horns and stuff like that during the day. Now that they put an injunction on us and we can't honk our horns for 10 days. Well, as soon as they did that, then the horns honked for about an hour straight. Like they, the mayor and the, the chief of police, every time they try to do something, it kind of backfires on them, you know, but there's been no violence at all, like none. So how long would you be prepared to stay there for? Well, I was prepared to stay here until all the mandates across Canada were lifted, like all of them. But now, if they actually bring in the riot police tomorrow or Friday, and they're going to arrest us and seize our trucks, I can't afford to lose my truck, right? Like, that's how I make my living. Why do you think it's the truckers that are objecting to it? What is it about that group that has made them lead this protest? Well, I, I think what got it started was, was if, uh, and I mean, I don't run to the States anymore. I pretty much local Alberta, but the guys that do go to the state, if they're, when it's not rolling, if they're not back, when they come back from the, like California, bringing a load of produce, they have to quarantine for 14 days when they get home. Well, who can do a one load? Like, so you're going to get two loads a month. Like you're not going to make it. And, we're basically quarantined in our trucks anyway. How much of the kind of blame do you lay at Justin Trudeau's door? Is it his fault, do you think? Or is this a wider problem? It's not all his fault. It's, it's, I blame it on all the parties. Because I don't believe that they're all crooked. Like conservative, liberal, bloc, NDP. I, I, they, they all, they're all in it for a paycheck. That's what I think. You know, like, uh, and they think that we work for them. It's like, no, no, you guys work for us. Like, don't forget that, right? But if they get the big high price paycheck every year and they'll say whatever they can to keep that paycheck. And as soon as the elections are done, then it's like, oh, well, maybe I didn't mean that, but thanks for voting for me anyway. And that's across all of the parties. It's not just liberal. I just heard that um, Alberta has lifted the vaccine passport. Is that something we should be celebrating? That happened yesterday. That happened yesterday. Uh, they lifted the vaccine passport. Uh, it's a good start. Do you think that's uh, because of your man, efforts? I think, uh, uh, maybe some. They're making it out to be like it's not. It's like, well, they're saying, well, the Omicron thing is now so mild that we're going to start lifting them. But I think if these guys hadn't have started this convoy, they wouldn't have done it. You know, because it's basically shut the country down. Like, there's 150,000 trucks in the Ottawa area that aren't working every day. And that, that's a big effect on the economy, right? And the, the thing I heard here now is if they actually chase us out of here, we're going to go home and park our trucks. Like, they can get us out of here, but they can't make me go to work. And if they got 300,000 trucks in Canada that are parked in their driveway that will not go to work, it's going to be a, it's going to cause a lot of trouble, right? What will make this end for you? Like, that's the question. I think if, let's just, let's just say that the COVID thing does gradually fade away and the, and the mandates are lifted, will that be over for you? Do you feel like you will be back to normal or do you feel this has started a new movement that is going to carry on? No, I think that if the mandates are all lifted and I think that's pretty much what everybody's looking for. But we do have to get some, uh, some people in government that are that are telling the truth about everything because as far as i can see a lot of it is is uh they, they spew a lot of non-truths on about what's going on right and they, they've got to get that handled so so yeah i don't uh but yeah the biggest thing for me is the mandates and and the vaccine like i'll never take the vaccine now because of all the thank you very much yep you betcha Sure. People come steady with Tim Hortons cards and, and stickers and the kids come with Ziploc bags with little notes wrote in them and, and cookies and people bring sandwiches and it, it's kind of, it's pretty steady. When it's busy on the weekends, I might as well not even close the door of my truck because there's, they come, they come steady all the time. And I've got, I've probably got 200 notes from kids that they've colored pictures of trucks. And it's like, you know, thanks for coming. 
we can't go to birthday parties and we can't go play hockey and and my mom is depressed because she had to quit her job because the daycares are closed and and it's it, it, it it's the whole thing right you know it's it's not right and these the little kids and my grandkids they're missing so far two years of a normal life like you have a, a kid that's in kindergarten grade one grade two that they've been sticking a mask on their face for two years they think that's normal well that isn't normal not in Canada it ain't normal you know when Pfizer tells us that that they don't want to tell us what's in the vaccine for like 55 years it's like well then maybe I'll take it in 55 years how about that like when you tell me what's in it I'll take it until then you're not sticking it in my arm period I don't care and that should be my choice it shouldn't be the government telling me I have to do it or I can't go get on a plane and go to Mexico or Australia for a holiday right you know like I worked my whole life and it's only been the last five years that I'm far enough ahead that I can take two weeks off in the winter and go and lay on the beach in Cabo, Mexico. And I should be there right now. Like right now I should be in Cabo laying on the beach because we always go the first two weeks of February. Instead, I'm going to go lay in the snow over here one of these days and send a picture home to my wife. And it's like, well, it's not quite Cabo, but at least I'm somebody of some kind, right? We were happy that you took the time to talk to us anyway. I'm sorry it wasn't on a beach, but oh, hopefully yeah. you'll get there sometime soon. Yeah, yeah, I really hope I get there yeah, next year, maybe. Okay, you thank, you ve- thank you so much, Tim. Yeah, you bet. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Well, after sitting for two weeks in that truck, I think Tim deserves a holiday. So let's hope he gets on one. Thank you to him for sharing his views. And thanks to Leila Mashui for giving us a bit of a tour and showing us what's actually happening on the ground in Ottawa right now. Thanks for tuning in. This was Unheard.